I mentioned at the very beginning when I introduced access that part of the ambition was to be transformational. And so what we did at the beginning when putting the proposal together was to think about how we wanted to act as environmental social scientists, both as a project team, but also more broadly across academic networks and stakeholder partners. It is very common nowadays for people to talk about the importance of equality, diversity and inclusion. But given that our area is about environment and climate emergency, it's absolutely vital for our credibility, I felt, that we were able to walk the walk as well as talk the talk, both in our institutions and in our project. So we've put together these what we call integrated guiding principles, and that's what we're going to hear more about now. And so I'm going to hand over to my project colleagues who will take you through those over the next hour or so. Stuart Barr, oh, where are you? Thanks. There we are. Right. OK, great. OK, thanks very much, Patrick, for the introduction. So, as Patrick said, um, there's a team of us within Access that are working on the guiding principles. So, myself, Kate Burningham, Sarah Golding, Steve Gilbert and Sarah Hartley. Um, and as you'll find out in a minute, we very much have been working as an integrated team, even though we've got interests that spread across the three guiding principles that I'll outline. So I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes just to give you the context of how we've been working with the guiding principles that Patrick uh, outlined. And then I'm going to hand over to Kate, who's going to talk to you about the breakout room exercise. And then we're going to get up, move to some breakout rooms, and think about the ways in which we might be already considering and how we might want to consider uh, applying the guiding principles in our own um, context. I would just like to say at this point a very big thank you to Sarah Golding and Steve Gilbert, who have done a huge amount of work on preparing the guiding principles for their initial publication um, in March this year. It's a huge amount of work, so thank you to both of you. And it has been really great to work uh, with such an enthusiastic team uh, on developing these. So, what are the guiding principles? If you haven't seen them before, you can click on the QR code on the screen or just Google Access Network Guiding Principles. Thanks to Sarah Baker, who's given them a really nice, big, uh, prominent place uh, on the Access website. That's really great. The guiding principles cover environmental sustainability, equality, diversity and inclusion, and knowledge co-production. And these are really important to us in the Access Network, as well as the wider environmental social sciences, because it's really important that we include diverse voices in our research and in the solutions that may derive from our research, and that we do that collaboratively, and that we also do that in a way that reduces our environmental impact. It's practically very important because these are guiding principles that need to shape uh, what we do in access, and anybody who has been involved in preparing a flex fund application will know that uh, one of the criteria we have is uh, how you deal with, how you consider uh, and apply the access guiding principles. But actually, they're also there to act and to start a conversation in changing broader practice in the environmental social science community. So, how were they produced? Um, Patrick talked about what happened in the development of the grant application, and just over a year ago we got together as a team and we thought, how are we going to deal with this? And the really interesting thing was, I think the original plan is that we would have three charters related to environmental sustainability, EDI, and knowledge co-production. And what was fantastic was the first thing we decided was, no, let's just have, well, at the time, one charter. That's now become the guiding principles. And the reason for that is that there are so many commonalities between the issues that we face in, uh, under the three principles, but also it's really important to work through some of the key tensions that may emerge, for example, between decisions on environmental sustainability and EDI. So we wanted to work together as a team and kind of provide a kind of united uh, set of principles to work with and to work through some, some of those tensions and challenges. The other ways are practically that we began to develop what are currently our guiding principles which will evolve over time. 
Looking at EDI policies uh, for events that have run, um, looking, I spent loads of time looking at sustainable travel policies from universities and other organisations, discussing um, EDI with those who lead on it in UKRI investments, all sorts of intelligence gathering that we were getting from existing practice and documentation. And then as we began to develop our ideas over the winter, um, then talking to the leadership team, consulting with them, doing an exercise similar to the one we will do in the breakout groups uh, with those who attended the winter school in January. And then also, I think, amongst the team, a lot of self-reflection. You know, we, we're all part of different research networks. Many of us attend university committees. What's going on in our own institutions? What's good practice? What are the problems? So a lot of, of that individual elements being um, brought to that. And, and one of the key bits of feedback that uh, we've used in developing the current draft of the guiding principles is the feedback that many of you gave us from last year's um, annual uh, assembly. So, how should they be used? Well, certainly they're for use within access. I've already said that they're a key part of preparing a flex fund application. They've been used to guide um, the recruitment process and running of the leadership college. We expect the activities in access to apply the guiding principles, sure. And we also expect that our network members will want to engage with the guiding principles, and that's what we're hoping to do in the breakout session in a moment. But also, we want this to generate a dialogue and to generate transformational change in the environmental social science community. So we're very much talking about something that's happening within the access network, but also beyond, that has a, a long-lasting legacy. Crucially, as the name suggests, guiding principles are not rules, they are prompts. They are prompts for context-specific actions. So we haven't come up with a rule book. I guess it would have been quite easy to come up with a rule book, although it would have been quite difficult to implement, but that's not what we're about. We're about thinking about context-specific actions, and therefore um, it's not a set of prescriptions. It's very much about having a conversation, raising awareness, and ensuring that that awareness translates into action within context. The guiding principles work, as you'll see from the website, um, by kind of going from the, the broad to the specific. So in a moment, I'll just describe very briefly the aims of the guiding principles. And then on the website, you can see we talk through in a lot more detail about each of those principles in turn. Um, we have a guide, uh, a kind of how-to guide, thinking about if you want to implement the guiding principles, what might you do? What's the process that you might um, go through? And hopefully lots of useful resources that uh, Sarah Golding and Steve Gilbert have collected, both from academic publications but also from policies that exist in organisations. And then the kind of really fine detail is at the bottom here, some amazing um, matrices that have been uh, developed by Steve and Sarah in relation to activities that are currently ongoing within Access. Now, we expect that this list will um, increase, uh, that it will evolve, and that's part of the conversation we need to have with all of you, is what's your experience of applying these principles? What works, what doesn't work, what are the tensions, what are the, the commonalities? So very briefly over the next couple of slides, I just want you to kind of, kind of give you the headlines of the aims of the access um, guiding principles. So we've got here um, environmental sustainability, EDI and knowledge co-production. And really on the right hand side, these are the key things that we are looking to achieve with the guiding principles. So we want to embed uh, good environmentally responsible practices into everything that we do. That's the, uh, the first one in relation to environmental sustainability. We want to ensure that everyone feels valued for who they are, that we're not just applying the letter of the law as we have to in EDI, but actually we're thinking really proactively about how we make what we do accessible and inclusive. And then that we have genuine, strong, trusting and collaborative partnerships that go from the very inception of a research project all the way through uh, to the end, to implementation through knowledge co-production. But there are two other key aims that I think are really important. The first one I've hinted at already 
is that actually we, we couldn't have done this in isolation. Um, I couldn't have run off and done my environmental sustainability bit and not talked to uh, Kate and, and Sarah Hartley, because actually there are these key commonalities that stretch across, but also there are these key tensions that we really need to be aware of and work through. And a lot of what we want to, to do with you over the next few years is to work through those tensions. And then the second one is to say something much more broadly about what can happen in the environmental social sciences. We're at a moment where people are really interested outside of the access network about what we're doing, and they're looking for us to take uh, a lead, but they're also looking for us uh, to co-produce something with them based on their experiences. This is just an example uh, of a diagram that we put together to think about how you might do that very practically. Um, so if you're applying the principles, uh, let's say you're holding a meeting or a workshop or you're doing some recruitment, um, what might you have to think about? And I suppose the key thing for us, the starting place on the left-hand side is recognition. We have to recognise the importance of the principles and be able to see them and map them out in what we want to do with our activity. And then through engaging uh, with that process, begin to plan how we might address those and recognise through that cycle on the right-hand side that some things will go well and some things need to be improved upon. And it's just that continuous cycle that we're interested in engaging uh, you with in this discussion about the, the guiding principles. Here are some examples also of the ways in which uh, we're having some impact already uh, in the application of the guiding principles. So we are very much embedding them into the activities that are ongoing within access. So thinking uh, about the opportunities that people have to engage in our events and making those as inclusive and accessible as possible. Um, I know that uh, Saffron and her team, when she was putting together the recruitment process for the Leadership College and also how the Leadership College ran, um, that was a really good example of best practice in how to be uh, inclusive in that process. As you know, it's built into the Flex Fund as well. But locally, all of us involved in this process are now taking this message out to the various university committees that we sit on, uh, the uh, learned societies that we might be part of. It's time now to take that conversation out from access and into the wider community. The, the final thing I'll say before I hand over to Kate is we're really pleased to be working with the Academy of Social Sciences and their learned societies they're really interested in what we're doing. We're going to be doing a presentation to their learning societies in September. And they're hoping that some of their learning societies will work with us to develop um, policies in those groups, uh, which will give us feedback and which will draw on the learning that we have. So I'm going to hand over to Kate now, who's going to talk us through our um, breakout activity. Hi, which won't take any time at all because I think Stuart's already set us up for it and the facilitators know uh, what's happening. But in, in the whole spirit of really embedding these principles within access, but also a process of reflection on them, dialogue and kind of learning from best practice in the room, uh, we're going to put you into breakout rooms um, and get you to think about your own experience as members of Access, but as pe participants in other organisations, as members of other organisations. What's the relevance of these things within your own roles, the work you're doing? Have you got experience of things that are working really well, things that are really challenging? And also thinking about the opportunities and challenges across these guiding principles, thinking about them individually, but also how they relate to each other. 